What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tastes Like Music. Jason and Joe here. Album of the week. This is the series where we review albums chosen by our patrons over on Patreon. And shockingly, this is not Joe's pick this week. This is a record that he has talked about on the channel before. I have not. Uh, we are talking about Coheed and Cambria. Good Apollo. I'm Burning Star 4, Volume 1. And then there's, what's the rest? I don't know. Uh, from fear through the eyes of madness there we go is this your 2005 album of the year it is all right well so we know joe likes it a lot going in should say this was chosen by clay big participant over on the discord we all love clay so uh, shout out to Clay, but uh, Coheed, interesting choice, not really what uh, many would consider TLM core, even though Joe loves it. It's not something that a lot of people over there on our Discord were hyped about. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, inter interesting pick. So I've, I've said this, I think I said this recently in another video, I forget what video I said it in, but I said how I'm developing like this nostalgic feeling for a lot of like this era of emo uh, type of stuff, even though I did not like it at the time. Like I was not an emo fan really of of any emo bands uh, back in the day. Now I hear a lot of it and I kind of enjoy it and I have a, a greater appreciation for it now than I ever did. Heading into this, I was kind of thinking that that may or may not be the case. I was kind of open. I was open to it. So uh, should you talk first or should I talk first? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. People know. I mean, if anyone's been watching this channel for a while, they'll know how much I like Coheed. The 2003 Deep Dive, you know, my, my favorite Coheed album, one, 2003. That's in keeping Secrets of Silent Earth 3. And this was my 2005 winner. They made a bunch of runner ups in the album of the year series. You know, I like Coheed a lot. So I'm more interested to hear what you have to say about, about this. I know you didn't particularly care for the 2003 so i can't imagine you'd really take to this one any more than that although it's a little less emo so oh uh, it's tough it's tough to tell yeah so i i'll, I'll go first so I, I think for many people the hurdle of get one of the big hurdles at least getting into this band is claudia's voice but i've said it many times on this channel i love a high shrieky voice like i have no problem with with high voiced male singers and i don't have a, a problem with claudia's that said Coming to this record, I found it way more mellow than other things that I've heard of Coheed's on this record. I feel like, you know, Favor House Atlantic, uh, is that the previous record? He's way higher on that than he is here at all, I feel like. And and live clips that I've seen and, and, and different times that I've seen Coheed, I, I feel like he's not nearly as high and shrieky on this record as as he normally is. So for some people that that may be a good thing. And I kind of I kind of like the fact that they don't fit too neatly into any genre box. Like there's there's emo in their sound, but they're not really an emo band. They're they're there's a metal influence for sure, but they're not a metal band. There's prog influence, but they're not a prog band. I even hear some like pop punk influence as well. But they don't really have, you know, a clearly defined space that they fit in. And and I like that in a band. Uh, I think they're very uh, unique. I found the songs here to be pretty melodic and memorable. And I think they benefited. I think the, the Coheed listen benefited greatly from following Judas Priest. I listened to it right after Priest. And to me, you know, people are going to be mad that I'm comparing the two. But... Um, you know, Coheed and Judas Priest are very different bands, but I think there is a similar similar kind of like, at least in like the guitar sounds and the riffage. And I found what Coheed was doing to be infinitely more melodic, more memorable, uh, a little groovier, a little more interesting in their song construction. I think they had a lot of good riffs on this record. I thought the playing was very tasteful. I thought the solos were like well-developed and like had an arc to them and and all that kind of good stuff. I really liked Always and Never, the kind of nice acoustic ballad near the beginning. 10 Speed was cool. That was one a little closer to the uh, 
pop punk end of the spectrum. Sweetly melodic song Wake Up was cool. Suffering, I think, was really good, too, with a really strong chorus. Uh, underrated bass playing throughout the record. I, I thought the bass was pretty nice. I think the downfall of this record and, and probably of Coheed in general is just their inability to like pull things back and, and rein things in a little, right? I think the scope of what they are and what they're trying to do is just like too much, too wide. I, I didn't really get the story. I, I didn't try that hard, but uh kind of just over my head all the sci-fi whatever's going on i don't know i heard a lot of people complaining about the lyrics uh people on the discord that were listening along i found that the lyrics were kind of easy to just let happen and not really pay attention to them so the lyrics didn't bother me so much um i don't know i wouldn't say that they're necessarily great lyrics probably but they didn't detract from my enjoyment it's just it's too much it's too long like, I also saw people saying that, like, the end of the record was was their least favorite part. And I don't know that the, it's necessarily worse, but I was, like, ready for it to be over by that point. Uh, I do think the the little sweet four-part thing at the end is actually pretty good. By the time you get to it, you're kind of, like, worn out, and it's just more of the same. So I had a fun time listening to it. it, it I, I think it being your album of the year is a little insane still. I, I don't think it's album of the year material. But I found it uh, enjoyable, and I am at three and a half stars for for this Coheed album. Well, I think that's as good as we could have possibly, we being the Coheed contingent over in TLM. I think it's just me and Clay, but uh, as good as we could have hoped for. Many nice things to say about it, and I totally agree with everything you said. It is impossible to follow this story i've listened to this album a hundred times i've heard every coheed album at least four or five times i have no idea what's going on in any of them you basically need to read like the comic book accompaniment graphic novels to to really know what's going on you, you can kind of pink pick up hints but like everyone has a confusing name and there's just a whole lot of lore and stuff that kind of goes into it that is not really like parsable by just listening to the stuff. And th that doesn't bother me at all. I don't really don't care about the lyrics. I think it's an interesting, could you get kind of this star Wars y sci-fi overtones, you know, there's, there's murder and, and mayhem and, and stuff happening as robots and stuff. And it, it all sounds cool with all the riffage. So, you know, the lyrics being confusing, the storyline doesn't really bother me. I really like the way that they throw back and they'll have themes from previous records, you know, little, little treats for the, the hardcore fans in there. I mean, they really just try and be confusing as, as much as possible. This is the third album, but it's good. Apollo. I'm burning star four. The second album was in keeping CX to silent three. The first album was second stage turbine blade. The first part of this, this trip you know, quadrilogy D doesn't exist yet it won't come out for like five more years and like it, it's just you know so like thick um what you're trying to to glean from all this stuff it, it's impossible to do it there's a song about a cursed 10 speed bicycle who's trying to convince the writer of the story to kill off a character in the book to get back at an unfaithful lover in real life so there's like this meta aspect of this album where like the writer of the Coheed and Cambria story is being talked to by a possessed 10 speed bicycle. And that's uh 10 speed of God's <laughs> blood and burial. So like they, you know, they could have, Claudio could have made things a little clear, but instead he goes like meta and it's just, just, mm. but it, it doesn't matter to me. I love this. Uh, I saw Coheed and Cambria I think it was right before this album came out, either 2004 or 2005, right before it came out. Played some of the, the songs from this one. Absolutely lost my mind. Claudio was out there with a, a double neck. Gibson, um, Travis Stever was using like a, a talk box thing on, on stage uh, for the final cut. It was just great. Uh, a lot of my friends who like Cooking Cambria stopped liking them for this album because it's a little too much rock 
they they really tone down like the emo ness. It's a lot more alternative and you know progressive metal influence in there. But I, I love the songs. I love Welcome Home. I love the guitar solos. I think the Suffering's their best like pop song. Just an incredibly great chorus. Uh, I love the bass playing on this album. I love the final suite, the Willing Well, one, two, three, and four is my favorite part of, of the whole, their whole discography, really. Uh, they're just really twisty and windy, and you know, they've got the throwbacks of Blood Red Summer in uh, the third one, and uh, Everything Evil. And it kind of wraps up the story a little bit in a way you can sort of understand uh, the final cut. I uh, love that outro solo, the, the trade-off between Claudio and, and Travis there. Really cool, really tasteful, like you said. All the solos, you know, it's not just like endless noodling. Like they have, they're very like David Gilmore in construction where there's like sections of it where you can kind of see where they're going and it ends nicely. It resolves really well. And I don't know, there's, to me, there's just nothing to not like about it. I know it's long, it's 71 minutes, but there's there's a lot of like, you know, uh, Wake Up, the nice acoustic ballad, Always and Never, uh, the acoustic intro, and plenty of kind of like, you know, cutouts and, and you know, not, it's, it's not like a full bore. I think they do enough to differentiate the songs and add in, in different elements and kind of slow things down and speed things up, so... I don't know. I don't quite understand why people are just like so against this album in, in the Discord. I, I think it's a, a very cool, very interesting, like you said, completely unique sound. Nobody sounded like this in 2005. Uh, nobody combined the different genres that they were doing. I don't know. Maybe it's just a nostalgia thing for me that Coheed was my favorite-ish band back then, but I uh, really haven't heard anything in 2005 that I like better than this, so I'm sticking by that. It's five stars. It's, five. Yeah, it's it, uh, it's a 1970s like four, but a 2005. They they lean very hard into all of the things that like music snobs don't like, right? Like like the big sci-fi story. There, I mean, I very comparable to rush in that way kind of like the nerdy themes and just like completely over the top and but i love rush too so i mean I, it doesn't bother me that much but i do see why people might not like them well i, I think like the emo people hate the prog rock people and the prog rock people hate the emo people so the fact that they're kind of in this like weird dead zone between uh these two genres definitely does not help at all and, and i when i was younger and people started bailing on coheed when this album came out i was kind of got that uh full force like the emo kids did not like this direction but i like the classic rock people like okay this is pretty cool so split split some uh fan bases there but uh i still still love them up until like 2015 and then i lose a little bit of my coheed caring I, I like it a lot. I'm very grateful to Clay for picking this one out, even though we've now lowered its score on Rate Your Music. So. <laughs> I, I, it's just, I, I think they could have trimmed it down a little bit. It doesn't have to open with like a symphonic orchestral piece. Well, no, it does, could... because every one of their albums <laughs> in this quadrilogy opens with that same theme. Uh, sometimes it's like through an old radio sometimes it's just like a rock song sometimes it's a orchestral arrangement like it is here and that is yeah it's like the star wars theme like it's how you know you're getting the coheed and cambria experience all right well that, that makes me like right. it more but probably makes a lot of people like it less <laughs> <laughs> that i could i could cut 15 minutes out of this album without losing a single thing i, I will say that yep. but i like the, the immersion in the 71 minutes I want as much go heat as possible. I want that little Led Zeppelin tribute at the end there, because why the hell not? All right. Well, if you gave this record a listen, let us know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Check out the video description for Patreon if you'd like to take part in the discussion over there. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.